welcome back to Turdford Channel. Thank you, Brother Jimmy, for the bringing me in on that one. Anyway, hey, we're back live and in charge and ready to do some chemistry. All right, in today's lab, we're actually doing a conclusion to the percent yield lab. In this lab, we were supposed to have took iron, Fe. We reacted that with cupric sulfate, CuSO4. And if we do a little switcheroo in this guy, we'll find that on the other side, we should have had iron sulfate and our big yield of copper that we're looking at. And I'm going to do something for all the little college nerds out there. The iron was a solid. The cupric sulfate we dissolved in water. So we'll put a little AQ, which means we dissolved it in water. FeSO4. I didn't see any FeSO4. That's because we made it, but it was also dissolved in water as we did the lab and then the last thing we saw was copper which copper is not dissol uh, dissolvable that's not sure that's a word but anyway in water the two most important things we should have right now you should have three numbers as you get ready for this lab conclusion you should have a mass of iron for the purpose of my video i will say that i had 1.4 grams of iron you should have a mass of cupric sulfate i will go with 13.1 one grams of cupric sulfate. I should also have a mass of filter paper, which I'm going to say that mine was 0.5. Now I'm going to say that when I weighed my filter paper and my copper combined, I'm going to come back and say that I'm going to say that that mass for me was 2.3. I'm just making up numbers in my head. So what should you do with this mass of filter paper and copper? Well, you need to subtract your filter paper, which for me would be 1.7. Actually, that's a lie. It would be 1.8. But anyway, I'm glad we had that talk. So 1.8, and this is as far as we can go. So what we need to do now, and where this lab says expected, if you've watched any of my other videos, this is what I call the theoretical yield. So what we need to do now is this. We need to, question mark, grams, we need to figure out how much copper we should have made. Well, if you're watching this video, you're supposed to be able to do stoichiometry by this point, which means we need to do this. We need to figure out what we were supposed to make of copper. So let's see if we can't work that out and do a little stoichiometry. So I'm going to do two stoichiometry problems. I'm going to do this 1.4 grams of Fe. And I'm going to jump it over there. And then I'm going to do this 13.1 grams of CuSO4 and jump that over there. Now, I'm going to let this video pause for a second and give you a chance to do that on your own. Because this is not a video on how to do jumping and stoichiometry. It's a video on finishing the lab. So anyway, pause and go to work. And through the magic of numbers, unpause, and this is what you should have for your, hey, I don't want that, for my two answers. So I did two jumps here. I did two molar relationships, two conversions. My iron could make 1.6 grams of copper. My cupric sulfate, 5.24. Well, that means 5.24 be gone. I'm going to throw me a box around that 1.6. This should be my theoretical yield right there. That is what I should have made, or depending on what book you use, that's your expected yield. All right, so that is my expected or my theoretical. That makes iron my LR. I'm going to go ahead and put that there. Iron is my LR. That was my EX. I know it was my EX. Why? Because the water was still blue when the lab was over. I used a bunch of extra CUSO4. I wanted to make sure that iron was my LR. Now, I've got this done. I'm almost finished. Now the equation for percent yield is, percent yield is, and again, it changes in what book you use. I like to use theoretical theory over, uh, I just wrote that wrong, backwards. Jeez, forgive me. I like to use this, actual over theoretical times 100. So in the case of my lab, and my numbers are going to be terrible since I made them up, my actual yield is what I just weighed out in lab today. For me, my actual yield was 1.8. This is going to be some awfully funky numbers. 1.8 grams over. I was only supposed to make 1.6. I have the 
defiled, defiled, <laughs> I have defied the laws of chemistry and physics. Uh, this is where you should be saying, what the crap are you talking about, Mr. Cole? Well, as soon as I get this calculadora open, how have I defied the laws of chemistry? Well, check this out. 1.8 over 1.6 times 100. I have transcended to new levels. Ladies and gentlemen, I have created matter. The old saying, matter cannot be created or destroyed, it's a lie. I had a 112.5% yield in this lab. Which is horrible. It means I created matter. So I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to finish this. My expected was 1.6. My percent yield, 112.5. I will now go and write my conclusion to this lab. My conclusion. And I'm not going to write it all the way out, but basically the conclusion is, uh, let's see. Here's what I want in your conclusion. I want you in a sentence. In a sentence. Whatever. Stop making fun of me. Everything's against me. <laughs> um, hey, what the crap? Now I'm just, somebody's going to get whopped. Hey, I want, that's an eraser. I want an actual, I want your theoretical, and I want, in this case, mine was 112. I want your percent. Those are the things that should be in your conclusion. Tell me what you got, tell me what you should have got, and then tell me your percent yield. Now, as for me, I'll need a source of error. Well, I made my numbers up. Therefore, I'm a big phony, and that's why my percent yield so bad. What if... Okay, so let's go something. Your target goal should have been 100%. 100% means you are perfect. So what happens when you didn't get this perfect yield? Well, if you got over 100%, if you got over 100%, that's easy. If yours went over 100, you probably should have washed. You know how you had the filter paper and you had the copper down in there? If you got over 100, you probably left a little bit of chemical residue in there, which means you had copper, but you probably also had a little CuSO4 in there and probably also had a little bit of FESO4 in. That's probably why you got over 100. The only other thing would be the fact that maybe it wasn't completely dry when you weighed it. If there was a little water left, it'd go over 100. So what happens if you got less than 100? Well, that means you obviously, maybe the amounts you put in, like me, 1.4, maybe you didn't. Did you wash all the iron out of your weighing boat? Um, uh, when you were stirring it up, did you did you not rinse off the little glass rod that you used? Did you have some left? Heck, did you spill any in your transfer? Once in college, I accidentally spilled my whole thing. I was trying to pour out of a beaker onto something, and I accidentally poured it all over my hand in the process, and it ruined my day. Anyway, thank you for watching the Turd Fur Network. Uh, peace, love, and as always, hot wings are fabulous. Later.